Tabashard has been playing. Started that off a couple of games in a row in the top lane. So they won't have the option to take it this time. What does Vitality answer with? Mm, that is the question. It's going to be a support off the board. We, we heard a lot about Thresh, but it's Alistair that's the first support that's I got. still think Thresh <laughs> is going to be very contested. Lulu is taken away. Kalista is not an option either now, as Vitality have chosen to remove that. So do we see the Corky ban come out and then force either a Lucian ban, or it's a Gangplank Loose that gets side taken gangplank. away? Again, and Perks just talked about how, you know, it's it's not a, the best blue side ban because you yeah. should be able to play it, and it, seemingly they don't. Well, and you've also got the, the issue there that when it was first picked yesterday, we saw Kabushard then immediately take the Lucian. So the Kindred's banned off. Rudy won't have a chance to shine on that champion. We kind of glazed over this a little bit, but he had an incredibly impressive contribution for kill on there. Now, do Unicorns first pick Corky for the middle lane, or do they first pick their bot lane and say, well, you can play Corky into it, we're fine with that? I feel like Corky is probably the better pick, pick just from it being a flex that is a standard flex, but they don't want to let Kabushard or Hyanan get their hands on this Lucian. Mm -hmm. So hmm. it'll be a ballsy move to leave that Corky up, but they do indeed. And we'll see if that gets locked in immediately for Vitality. So this kind of rotation, you could be looking at a Poppy and a Corky. Elise is up, so you could see Poppy Elise. May see the, the presence on this Thresh be taken away here if Kasing wants to get his hands on that. Both Kasing and Hillasang, big Thresh players. And I, I've noticed a bit of a change in Vitality when they're playing with the Thresh, as opposed to Kasing on the likes of a Morgana. Kasing seems to be more active, always moving forward on Thresh. There's no real hesitation for him, unlike on the Morgana where he's fine to play from behind. He's just more willing to make plays. Yeah, he certainly is, and I think they've got to really think about what they want to prioritize for this first pick. You can see Kasing talking through the mic there, and they will at the last couple seconds, tick down, go ahead and take that Thresh away, and they will also grab the Elise for Shook. We'll have to see what Rudy picks up, since we've only seen him on this Kindred now banned away. If he decides to go with the jungle this rotation, they don't need to do it, unless they want to hide something. Well, the support jungle roaming pack is going to have a lot of single target crowd control right now, and the ability to set up plays as well. Not really showing anything too much, though. <laughs> this yeah. is Vitality just saying, OK, well, we'll just pick a standard first rotation. Poppy available, Corky available now have fallen through. And this is one of the other things that uh, you are uh, fortunate with. Enough power picks were available that the second rotation now becomes the uh, the point of focus. Yeah, a lot of stuff has fallen through. You mentioned that Corky. We'll see if Rudy goes a little bit more standard route on that Rek'Sai or if they go for the Poppy and... Corky is locked. They're going <laughs> so, for it. So visit Chachi. I want to see Chachi play well, this. Well, I have a, I have one caveat that I would put forward. Rudy is a player that has come from being really high up on solo queue, and in solo queue, Poppy jungle does destroy people. It's I have heard he plays jungle only. I, yeah, yes, he has. We'll see whether it's high as Poppy at this point. I am expecting it more likely to go up to Chachi in the top lane. I haven't seen him since the rework on Poppy. That's a, a cool one for me that we're going to see. He always plays the... Uh, Crimson, is it Crimson Fist, Poppy? Crimson the, Hammer. The Crimson Hammer one, yeah, that is, uh, yeah. that's the one. So we'll see whether he sticks to that. But uh, nevertheless, that's kind of the rotation we were expecting. Now we're likely looking at the Ezreal to be picked up by Hyanan mm -hmm. if he wants to opt for what everybody else is doing. Uh, other options could be the Caitlyn we've seen Forgiven pick up. Uh, yeah. Misfortune and Morgana has tended to be what they go for. And whoa! Fiora, though, too. Cabo! Decides to do it blind. And we got a Jinx lock in two for oh. Yarn. And Jinx Thresh lane have not seen this in a little while. Jinx is a champion that's speaking to a lot of AD carries. They were talking about being a fairly weak pick when it comes to AD carries. Just in the overall sense. She's very rarely talked about, even in the B tier, where it's like Misfortune, Ezreal. What Jinx is always going to be able to do is push towers very quickly with the attack speed that ramps up from her Gatling gun, but this is a pick that we are yet to have seen in uh, the EU LCS. Yeah, so far in this split, it was definitely a lot more powerful and popular last year, and they, everyone was loving the hyper carries, but the lack of escapes that Jinx possesses does make it a bit difficult. But Yarni Kasing, very solid bot lane together. We'll see if they can pull it together because there's a Braum lock-in for Hillisang, which means if we see the Lucian Braum lane, now that is a bully lane, if I ever saw one. Last <laughs> pickup in the jungle, of course, is going to be that Rek'Sai. So we know where the Poppy's going, and I'm happy about it. And that means we're just waiting on mid lane into Corky. We've seen the Ari matchup played by Perks yesterday. He got the kill onto, uh, onto Power of Evil, that was. Pretty much one versus one, and the rest of uh, Origin were coming in when he got the kill. So will we see the Ari from Nuketuck? Looking at other options, Victor is available, but doesn't quite do so well in the laning phase. Needs mm -hmm. time. 
Still options for Noob Duck. Still options indeed. Should be a fairly safe lane for Fox if he plays it out right. But there is the Ari lock-in. So Nuke Duck says, I can take you on. Got himself that ignite. And now we'll have to see how these two shake out. This could be a very explosive game. A whole lot of damage on both sides. So I wonder whether we'll see Vitality running the same kind of setup that they were looking to do yesterday, where you have Kabashad in the 1v1, looking to scale up, looking to take control of that. You have Nuke Duck on Ari, take control of the other side lane, and always push it out and regroup with the team quickly. And then the rest of the pack's kind of mid lane pushing. I wonder if that's what Vitality are going for. It's a difficult comp to pull out, pull off, and it requires a lot of vision control, especially against the likes of a Corgi who has the package. Rek'Sai can cover a lot of distance very quickly with the ultimate as well, and Chachi will have the teleport as always. We will have to see indeed if the Unicorns can pull off that coordination that they have been so excellent at adapting, and Vitality is going to be a tough ass for them. But as it all stands, Hush settles over as the coaches will shake hands, get ready to walk off stage. But for now, we are ready to go. The lineups are locked. It's time to load up for this match to the top of the standings. Ignite takes him, but the tower shot! Oh, oh that's the They seem really strong. Just in the 2v2, I don't think it would be super much problem. Yon is flashed away! He's got a triple kill with bullet time! I feel like so much more confident now that I have still back next to me and I can like finally play my trash and like show that I'm good. We already saw what he can do with the champion. They'll even leave open fresh so that they want him to pick it. They are much better than the Unicorns roster before. And we knew that Thresh was going to be a contested pick. We also know that these two bot lanes are going to go right at each other. Welcome I'm excited to, to see this 2v2 stress. I am as well. We'll see if Kasing is uh, comfortable. He has his Thresh. He He's has his, his pillow pillows too. as well, the, the Baron pillow that a fan so kindly gave him to make sure he is uh, comfortable in the game. But it is fall. all about the side lanes, as is with the current meta right now. And, uh, you feel like Vitality are looking to just grab control of that fairly early and continue pushing with this Jinx. Very, I want to call it like an old school pick of Jinx, just because it, it is. It is really. Europe, like, this pairing is old school. It is. It is. And you know, it's you have the Thresh to give the Jinx safety. Jinx can push the towers very quickly. You have Wave Clear that comes from Jinx from the rockets and global presence with the ult. But uh, a right. lot of people just feel like because there were a lot of changes to itemization and the way that the laning Minions phase plays out, and, like champions like Lucian would just touted as being better because you have a good laning phase and the good ability to push towers decent wave clear on top of it as well jinx we're gonna have to see whether hyana can make it work mm -hmm. well it is that traditional hyper carry you know up there with the tristan is of the league but the reason i think on top of all the early pushing power that lucian and corky were so powerful is is the games are shorter on average yep. now and we're not getting to these late game points where the hyper carries are just out of control and you see champions like Lucy not fall off as hard. Exactly. That is exactly right. We are ending up in a lane swap, so no two. Uh, Sorry, Fyra. Oh, well. Okay, I mean... I mean, it's the smart it's, thing to do. Well, it's going to happen, because this is how the game is in a meta game right now, is you have the lane swap to kind of get the game in that situation and then look to control side lanes from it. We're going to take a look at Keystone Master. They're not mirrored across the board, too. Yep. They got a nice little spread of them all. Array of colors. Yeah. Keystone Masteries at this point. If you guys are unsure about them as well, we had a wonderful segment at the top of the day. Be able to catch that one again later. Courtesy of Quick Shot. Now, Hillisang will be making some moves around this jungle. Shook and Cobbshot have already secured the red buff. You got to be careful not to run smack dab into him as Kasing goes on an early roam of his own while his free push for both AD carries in the reverse lanes. Fox in this middle lane has already managed to kind of pressure Nuke Duck away. Hillisang is getting right up in here. It's just making it difficult for sure. Yeah, uh, that Raptor's going to reset. To do anything here. It's running out of patience. It's like, come on, guys. Are you going to you gonna deal with me? Or uh, are you gonna have to go back? Home? Hilly's not going to. No, it won't. Well, <laughs> Hilly fighting this Raptor this early on will be very take about slow. a minute. And we'd be here and he would probably die to it before he'd ever get it. But Vitality, on the other hand, not concerned with the jungle camps, are yep. already pushing on. Has have this tower down below half health. Unicorns are only just getting to the tower here, so they don't quite have the pushing potential that this Jinx has. And this is one of the things in, in a lane swap, Jinx is going to do very well because you have that ramping up auto attack speed. You have the ability to push the waves very quickly 
with the rockets, and it results in the tower going down for Vitality before Unicorns even have the other tower at half health. Yeah, definitely dropping the ball there. Unicorns were the one that started this lane swap, but it's Vitality that are on the board ahead of them. And as you said, this Jinx, inferior 2v2 lane since you want to take a while to get rolling, but they don't have to worry about a thing. We One thing that you kind of have to worry about if you nuked up just for three more levels is the mid lane matchup. Perks talked about it yesterday, talking about Corky into the Aryan Fox is already bullying Nuke Duck around pre-6. It's kind of to be expected. Tower finally falls in the top lane, but once Nuke Duck 6, uh -oh. it should be okay. Oh, oh. that ward saved Jinx. the life. Yeah. And Hilly Sang is caught. He's going to step on the traps, but he's unbreakable for just another moment. Rudy's there, the flay backward. Kasing really wants to get a kill for Yarnin to start things off. These two, the synergy has been so real. The rocket, it's burning his health, and he just barely survives, munching a biscuit as he goes. Man, that was close. Uh, just got that cookie and uh, didn't want to put the cookie down, but at this point, Unicorns of Love don't want to let up in the mid lane either. 32 CS to 23. That was a nice sequence in the top lane, but again, it's uh, a little bit of a distraction from where the real lead is opening up for now. The towers were traded fairly evenly, which means we're fairly even on gold as well. Vitality have edged themselves ahead because Chachi is behind Kabochard as well when it comes to the CS. So mm -hmm. again, it, it's going to be about who can become stronger in this Chachi versus Kabochard matchup. We just saw it with uh, Steve and Odoamne, where Steve ended up becoming more powerful to duel the 1v1, but in team fights, just couldn't offer as much as top laners. Yeah, top laners have just become so critical with the way the meta is shaping up. These carries become very popular, very situationally used, but always the mind games and the picks and bans. Vitality are on this tower a lot quicker than Unicorns once again. So we see these fast pushes turning around. This is exactly what Vitality want for Yarnin. And not only is Cabo up in CS, he's also up way up in experience. He's over a whole level up on uh, Visit Chachi. So it means that Kabashad, just getting into this game a little bit earlier on, is going to be able to scale that bit faster than Visit Chachi. Of course, we oh. talked about it. Oh, Kabashad's actually going bot. Feels he can defend this turret, and of course he can. It's only Visit Chachi that's there. Big, big blind spot for Unicorns. They thought they were going to be able to fast push this and save it, but because they're so far behind, they don't even get the second tower. So now Steelback and Hillisang are going to have to clear this wave here. Rift Herald has opened up. Vitality are pinging for it. They're just two steps ahead of Unicorns right now. And I like the strategy from Vitality. They say, hey, OK, what's the matter right now? We have to push towers fairly early on, control side waves. Good. Who's good at doing that? Jinx is good at doing that. What do we got to do? We got to get rid of, like, Callista and make sure we don't end up in a 2v2. Sweet. Let's do it. Let's get the Jinx. It's working out so far for Vitality, but they're ahead of the play when it comes to map movements. Rudy's gone bottom lane. Cabo Shard is in trouble. He's got to burn his flash. He's safe. Looks to dash back in and secure an extra bit of CS before backing on out. So with the use of the summoner, he stays alive. Meanwhile, pressure on the top side is shook. Backs away now with the mini Baron buff, courtesy of the Rift Herald. See what uh, he decides to push. Looks like he's heading bottom side right now. If they can keep this turret defended, they have the advantage. So far, close to a 1,000 gold lead for Vitality in this game. Good luck getting through mid for a while, though. <laughs> That's a farm fest if I ever uh, saw one. Going to be able to, uh, not quite as much as our last game, which was Victor versus No, that's Gun. true. So it, it is still difficult. It's a less efficient farm fest. However, Let's take a look. Shook has snuck his way into bottom lane. Waiting very patiently. The spider in the web flashes, gets the cocoon, and Chachi's in trouble. On a run now. Here comes Rudy, though, and he will deter them. Chachi makes his escape, courtesy of some minions as well. Yeah, Chachi uh, pays the fare, gets himself away. Rudy was already deep inside the enemy jungle. You can see the wards he actually put down from his tracker's knife, put down a pink ward as well. So has the whole bot side jungle warded when it comes to camps. So Rudy is uh, already taking, you know, a solo queue attitude and throwing it out the window. Let's just get deep vision control. Let's play for the team, play for everything, yeah. not just about himself. Yeah, very impressive how he has managed to integrate himself into this team so far. We saw the same thing with Joko. He's now over in Millennium as well, but, uh, or Ben in Millennium as well, but it really has been impressive to see Unicorns be able to swap players out like this as <laughs> Shook gets a steal away. Oh. As soon as I praise him, well, it was an individual mistake from Rudy there. Yeah, the thing is, Rudy even had a smite, I think. Yeah, No, he yeah. did. He just it, he, it didn't, was... he didn't think Shook was coming. <sighs> the ward over the wall. You saw it, man. The last time I praised somebody. Yeah, I know. Always happens. Cursed. Cursed to always have it happen just after you sing that phrase. I know. Well, Yarnin's going to be pushing on the bottom side here. He's easy enough wave clear with those rockets. Kasing does the same thing that Rudy was doing. Gets a lot of ward coverage in this bottom side. So much traded back and forth. 
Well, let's take a look on the mid lane since Vitality are heading up there, see if they can get a collapse onto Fox. It would be difficult due to his Valkyrie. So hard to gank a Corky, but Rudy's not far behind. And Cleanse and Flash. Like, yeah, yeah, maybe they're not going to try it. Bugs is super safe right now. Nothing has forced him to burn any of those. So Vitality are looking for the next best thing for themselves right now, knowing they have bot lane control, bot jungle control, and uh, a Jinx that is going to be able to power down this dragon very quickly. Not a lot of good test options. And they left Cabo Shard in the top to be able to free yeah, on this wave. Hill is saying, Nuke Dog waits on the charm and he doesn't get it. He stands behind Fox and he is nice and safe. We'll have to see what the Unicorn's next move is. Rudy heading up towards this top side, seeing if he can control more of this jungle as he starts the red buff, slides and glides back on towards him. Only Cabo Shard is really there. No teleport available, but Vitaly are already doing the opposite on the bottom side. But look at where Cabo Shard's had the wave for the last few minutes. He's building up this big stack of minions, and he's had it on this side of the map for a while, and it's really dropped Chachi's support, uh, Chachi's CS and levels here. Chachi doesn't even have access to his ultimate. Kabashad is level seven, but here comes Rudy trying to fix this problem. Kabashad, who's he gonna go aggressive on? Knock in, gets the parry, but Chachi knocks him against the wall. There's a steadfast presence, prevents him from getting out of there, and now he's got the heal shield on. Rudy was taking a lot of minion aggro, but Chachi swaps back in, still not level six. He's 1v2ing right now. This is Crazy Cabo Shard pushes unicorns away. Cabo Shard has a serious amount of damage, but even with the irritating play that UOL were doing there, Visit Chachi and Rudy just kind of bouncing back and forth uh, on top of each other so the Vital couldn't get propped. First package of the game. Fox is going on in. Oh, he gets locked Fox. up though, but he's going to be able to get away with the cleanse, and he gets first blood flashing away as Chachi comes in for the defense. Nuke Duck and Rudy are in right behind. There's the hammer. Knock him away, and the unicorns. Get out square with a kill as the rocket misses. Double now! Fox with the back end. Nice rocket. <laughs> yeah, not the best rocket from Hyanan, though, at the same time. That was just Vitality not quite being able to close the same distance that Fox did. And Fox turning up with the package play that looked like it was going to backfire on him. It looked like Kabashad and Shook were going to be able to outduel, but just not enough from Cabo. Fox had the cleanse, had the flash available to get himself around in the fight, and Nukta just behind the play. I'm going to try and watch Nukta's tracking on the map. Like, look, he's still just leaving mid lane as Fox enters the top lane. Kabashad does a decent job of just kind of moving around this fight. Fox already used that cleanse, uses that flash to get himself away from Shook, and now it, the damage turns around. Nukta doesn't manage to land the charm because Fox sidesteps it and then goes whoop all the way back to base. That's and that's why it was all so she wrote. Even the Crux <laughs> wanted to get involved in it. But yeah, really, really close. Very expensive pickup for Fox, securing two kills on that one at the cost of two summoners, but you always gotta say, hashtag worth. And after all that, Unicorns have got themselves a gold lead. Take a look at that fan vote though. 50-50, these two that, teams, it's so close, and it's so close to the fans as well. Well, it's, uh, I mean, it's a good sign for these teams. Vitality, oh, yeah. of course, a new organization to league. Uh, not a new organization overall. Unicorns are in their second year now of being an LCS organization, so clearly fan bases for both of these. Yeah, well, Unicorns usually can bank on that fan vote win, Normal. though, unless it's against a team like Fnatic, so Vitality definitely coming out in force on Twitter. We'll see if they can do the same on the Rift. 200 gold down. It's 11 and a half or almost 12 minutes into this game as Chachi trying to push Cabo Shard away as he takes a tower shot. Still very far behind in the CS this game. But it has been a lot of action. Not so many kills. A lot of rotations around this map. Shook looking to potentially start up the Rift Herald. He does with the help of the Sing roaming around and Cabo Shard as well. Fairly shortly though, we're gonna start realizing the difference between Hyanan and Steelback when it comes to their power. Hyanan obviously waiting for that second item, the attack speed item, to uh, finish his first BF item. If that goes into Infinity Edge, which uh, has been talked about time and time again, about how is a first item, it's not great because it's a multiplier. It's kind of been done to death. So uh, there is a timing window for Steelback and an experience window, level nine to level seven. So that, that's been the exchange is Experience onto the AD carry in exchange for top laners. In UOL's favor for AD carry, top lane for Vitality. Which one is going to have the more impact, I wonder? We will see, because Steelback is already level 9. There's that level 9 Colin. You sing and Yarn will make their escape, but they got some pressure on the mid turret. So much minion side pushing from Vitality's side here as Nuke Duck <laughs> patiently waits in the brush for Rudy. Doesn't know. Oh, now, now he knows. knows. Okay. Tremor Sense coming in <laughs> handy. Two level difference, that would have been bloody. Whew, that could have been a big play for Nuka. But he had no Ignite, so 
I guess he was kind of like, oh, do I feel confident about this? Nah, I'm going to back away. Had that been somebody like uh, Steelback or Hillisang, you may have just oh, gone, gone for it. I think Very Rudy aggressive. has enough to get away. Experience? Aggressive too. Experience is actually leveled up between top laners now. Chachi's yeah. been given the time. Cabochard hasn't really had time to get any farm himself. He's got back up in the game. Cabo is also still sitting on basic boots himself. Well, Chachi has gone the very early Boots of Swiftness start to try and move around the map a lot more. Obviously very valuable. You still see Kabushar taking some damage after the Steadfast Presence is finished up. He's got the Rift Herald buff on, but not as powerful as that Baron buff as we've mentioned often. Yeah. Chachi's able to clear this wave away with the hammer very slowly, one shot at a time. Also, the other thing these Swiftness Boots are going to do for Chachi is early on, uh, even in like small skirmishes and any team fights that come up later, he's able to just get straight through the fight. <laughs> it's like, I'm just going, I've got a lot of movement speed, I'm gonna smash somebody into a wall and get my W up. Position quickly. I mean, Cobble's yeah. trying to do the same thing, especially when he locks a grand challenge on those vitals. You have to be able to dash around to try and find it. So these two ever get in Mortal Kombat, it is definitely gonna be a fight to the finish. You have to see as the farm alarm goes ring-a-ding-ding, -ding, and Rudy goes looking for his red buff. It's not gonna be there, though. Cabo still pushing heavy on the top side, and he finds Chachi a little bit outside of lane. One level difference, but there he goes after the parry, knocks him into the wall. Steadfast Presence is up, and it is just a battle of the bruisers, but the grand challenge is issued, and Chachi says no thank you. Yeah, Chachi, if that tower wasn't there, would have likely been uh, traded more against my camera shot. Dead uh, mortal. Yeah, but maybe. It's, it's kind of one of those situations where Chachi actually held his nerve and held his ultimate. So if Kabashad was going to continue to go forward, he'd either just knock him straight up and disengage or full channel and force him to run away. Right. So Chachi wasn't actually in kill range for Kabashad there. Not up that spot of the map anyway. So while well, the game is definitely settled down, you can still see that Vitality is hanging on to this map control that they have. They're grabbing themselves another dragon here. Each one would love to be able to steal this one away, but they're not in position to do so. They smite it down. Question is, where do the unicorns really go from here to get the mid lane? One? Mid lane they go right now. <laughs> because you can see, look, the vision control is already here. Hillisang is gonna wait and just slow Vitality. Wave clear from B. Oh, teleport coming out too. Oh, a big package from Fox, and he's turning his attention immediately to the Jinx. Ignited Yarn and already burned both of his ult or both of his summoners rather, as Nuke Duck is gonna try to foxily sneak his way away. That means everyone's gotten out on the side of Vitality. And Unicorn's Gambit does not pay off here as the tower, no damage on it still. Split focus for the Unicorns there. Some went after Kabashad, some went after Hyanan, some went down for Nuke Duck. And it means that Vitality were able to position behind the tower. Unicorns may have been able to just rush them into the mid lane with this illusion, with the core key. They have a fairly fast tower push. And uh, without Nuke Duck being in position, the wave clear wasn't there. Now it's there, it's established. Vitality can defend that turret and Unicorns Kind of have to reset this play. They've got a wave pushing away from them in the top lane and pushing in towards them in the bottom lane. So somebody has to go down bottom and clear that out. Chachi now doesn't have a TP. Fox doesn't have the package either. So two of those utilities to cross them out very quickly are down. Maybe it has to be Rudy with the ultimate. Might be able to do as he's got it very shortly off a of cooldown. Fox and Steelback still hanging around. Mop up duty in the mid lane. Also some help from Hillisang there as he stands behind him, or stands in front of him as it were, and they send Chachi down to do the cleanup. And I wonder now, with this next wave pushing in, Tower's on half health, Hillisang's recalling, Corky's over in the jungle as well, Vitality may feel out a push in this middle lane just from Visit Chachi being down there without teleport. Cabo can go top because he has his teleport available, so he can catch that wave and look to make a play in the middle lane. But Vitality aren't going to go for the all-in play here, Rudy has his ult to get back into the lane. And it means Vitality just going to nudge at the tower and not actually put up, push up to it. This could be a very slow game here. We're already 17 minutes in, only two kills on the board. Finally. Yeah, well, Unicorns definitely had a pretty slow start to the game yesterday. It really wasn't until 19 minutes that first blood was picked up, so we've already beaten that metric. But hmm. Vitality definitely want to be a little quicker about it, I think. Well, I, uh, they're going to get slowed down by something, and it's something we haven't seen in a little while. Something that kind of has changed around being standard when it comes to extra cooldown reduction on uh, Illusion. So we're gonna have that curling up fairly often. And uh, we'll be able to get that and push down lanes. Is standing at CDR right now with uh, Boots of Lucidity and the Essence Reaver. Have to see. Vitality still have been controlling 
The objective's in the river. The Rift Herald should go in their favor as well. This will be the last one available. As Yarnin, though, is unfortunately caught out, throws the traps, but he is knocked and battered and bruised. Kasing can't get to his rescue in time. Shachi's got the kill. Kasing has got to fly away, but he won't be getting away. Stunned up, winner's bite, hit down, and steal back takes him out. This is one of the problems with Jinx, though, is on her own, she is a very big weakness when it comes to getting picked off. No escape mechanism when your flash is down, like Kalman gets caught trying to come across to Kasing. Uh, the, the fact that Rift Herald got, was taken down and there was a global uh, warning is a, a big enough factor that you all know that they can just make that catch. They're able to push a tower, look to push another one. Shook is only the one here to defend. That is going down. So another tower picked up by Unicorns, two in the middle. A couple more kills, four to zero now. They've got themselves 2K in the lead. And despite the fact that uh, Nuke Duck and Kabashad were pushing in the top and bottom lane, they can't actually get too much more. Someone should come down to deal with Nuke Duck. Uh, and in that middle lane, Hillisang actually tanked up like three or four tower shots just to ensure yeah. that they got it. Otherwise, the minion wave would have died too early. They would have had to have backed away and looked to reset. So just cutting a corner for the Unicorns of Blood that, play, that pays off in a fairly big way. Yeah. Dodging the cocoon, Shook looking to push forward. Vitality want to answer back this one. Nuke Duck still sitting in the brush, <laughs> but he's spotted again. Rudy, he's not going to be fooled by that trick. He's playing too many games. Yeah, too many solo key games with no communication to know that just fire out the pace for every now and again. Into those common spot scenario would be waiting. I think it's kind of that inevitable time now with Rift Herald on. That, uh, mini, that middle tower is going to get taken down, of course. Minion waves not really affected in, in anything other than attack speed with that Rift Herald buff. It's enough, though. Uh, it's enough. Let's take a look at Yarning getting caught because he just steps way too far wow, here. He actually just steps out. There's not even a ward here from the unicorns that spotted him. That's actually just like a solo mistake yeah. from Yana, which is very rare. We rarely see that kind of mistake where it's like, I'm moving forward here, especially with no flash. And especially with regards to playing with Kasing. I mean, he's been on the squad with him for, at this point, roughly a year. It not the same. It's not the same squad, but in the same. Yeah, I, I think we're actually. I think we're actually on a year now. Week yeah. four, week five was when Kasing came in last year. Yeah. So really, it has been kind of strange to see the situation. Yarnin making a solo mistake with that. Don't expect to see too much more of it as Rudy moves his way back to blue buff. Still, unicorns throwing their weight around. So Vitality got off on the better foot. We'll have to see. When these two do clash, who comes out ahead in the fourth fight? So far, just been a couple of catches, chases around the map. Nothing massive in this game. Vitality, still though, have a Cabo Shard, have a Fiora. See if that split push can come in handy. I think Chachi is in a place to stop him still. Well, one thing that could come in handy right now is some of the items that are in Kasing's inventory. He's opting for the, uh, well, the build towards the Aegis of the Legion. One already competed on Shook, so uh, as you kind of expect right now, one that's going to go into Locket. Will Kasing put it in Banner of Command to slow down some of the wave clear from Fox? Uh, I suppose. It is. Uh, for, you know, remember, Corky now is like 70% magic damage as well, so it, it is more difficult to deal with. They do have illusion, they have a problem. So it's not the end of the world. It's not like they're running a triple AP comp. And they're like, oh no! Bannered up minion, what do I do? Hey man, they're tough. They are. They're yeah. tough banner. We had one in Challenger the other day that took like three people to kill because they were running like Quadra AP composition. Oh, geez. We watched that Why for like a whole minute. AP? Whole minute of like an Elise trying to auto attack. I have to type that in Dynamic Q every single time I play now. Uh, Chachi dueling it out with Cabo Shard, but as so many of these fights have been, it looks like it will be just a standoff. As this time it's the Unicorns that head their way towards the Dragon Pit. Forestalling the Vitality extra ones. That's the first for them. That means they will get that extra 6% AD and AP. And in. Uh oh, Rudy. Oh, right Rudy. into the middle. Into a trap. Into a hook. Hello, it's all of Vitality, but Hillisang is there. Fox around the side. Finds Yarnin. Gets himself his pre kill. Kasing now is going to have to flash out of harm's way as Cabo Shard can't 1v5. And Shook's burned his flash as well. Two quick kills for Unicorns, all set up by an untimely ult. Oh, that was just a uh, dangerous, but uh, cost that pays off for Rudy, the ultimate going straight in between the rest of Vitality. Vitality couldn't group on him fast enough to take him out, and the Unicorns were already in position running up from the Dragon. That was just catching out Vitality, and this is one of the problems that Vitality have actually uh, succumbed to in the last couple of weeks, most notably in their game against H2K. When they haven't had enough vision control to read 
fights and read situations, so they've either been forced into bad fights or no fights, and it stalled the game out to the point where Vitality got outscaled by H2K. Problem is, Unicorns are really good at skirmishing right now in this game. Unicorns don't want to wait later in this game. They have six kills already, and Vitality know that something has to happen quickly, and that could be the Baron here. They saw Fox in the bottom lane, no package available, so he can't cross the distance, and Vitality are on this. They're gonna check for the Unicorns. Hillisang's gonna spot it. He's rumbled them, but isn't enough. And sniffed it out, but the Baron is already so low. Chachi coming in around the side. This is such an early Baron. It's so dangerous here. It's secured up by Shook, but now Kasing is caught, trying to run away. Shook won't be so lucky. Chachi nails him with the hammer and splats the spider. Nonetheless, Vitality get out without losing more than one. The important thing there was Cabo said, okay, you guys, I, if you, one or two of you die, that's fine. I'm backing out of here because I need this Baron buff for my solo lane push. I need to be able to establish control in that side lane. Cabochard recalls before anything else happens in that fight. Gets himself out safe and sound. Kasing nearly runs into Rudy in the jungle, but the Unicorns have the push going for them right now. They're looking for top lane tower before the minions from Vitality can actually get there, and they're gonna get this. Rudy just goes around the side. He's able to stop from going on in there. And now all of a sudden, Chachi turns he on the Yarnan. heat. They get the knockup. Looking for Yarnan, but he's yanked away by Kasing. Cabo Shard is taken out in the meanwhile. A parting rocket will not do enough damage as all the unicorns are able to make their escape. Vitality still can't find a kill. And a time and time again, Yarnan is the one getting caught in these fights. This time he survived, but this is happening too often for Vitality. They need Hyanan to be able to output damage. He's finally got past that two item spike on Jinx. The problem is, because he's getting caught, he has to just back out, take the lantern away, can't really deal damage in these team fights. And that means Unicorns of Love with this Corky, with this Lucian, are so, so strong at fighting. They definitely are. Throwing that weight around, Fox has been able to pad his score more than anything else, but Steelback throwing down that culling at such a rapid rate has been able to ensure that Vitality don't have nearly enough minions despite this Baron buff to do a whole lot. Yarn is going to try to change that. He sends a line of them down. Sing hooks one to finish it off, but all of a sudden, Nuke Duck is being chased down by Rudy and Fox. Sends out the Orbit Deception, a whole line of minions there, and all of a sudden, it's not worth it. Nuke Duck staying nice and fine. I want to revisit something the analyst desk are talking about, uh, and that is how unicorns have had this multiple changes with junglers now. They started with Diamond, had to swap him out for Joko due to issues. Now they've swapped Joko out for Rudy. And Rudy's having a good game as well. Like, Rudy's having a good week. Like, this kind of engage, yes, he gets played back, but it's enough. It deters some of the disengage that comes, and in goes Chachi. There's no play available to stop him going in on Hillisang. You can't stop him from following up, and it's enough for just Unicorns to get a pick and pull back away. And that's tough on a Rek'Sai. Normally you see Rek'Sai as secondary engage, not primary. Oh, but Chachi's gonna be primary in this case, as he finds Shook, who'll hop his way up. But what goes up must surely come down. No Raptors available, and Fox picks up yet another kill. Cabo's on the bottom, trying to make the best of it, though. Yeah, the problem is the rest of Vitality have to recall. Cabo has a fairly big stack, but I don't think it's fast enough to push in. Cabo's no teleport, so he has, to, he has to commit to something here. He's gonna go. Chachi's Chachi there. recalled for it as well. Yeah, I'll have to fight him out there, but Yarnin and Nuke Duck were enough to stop this push in the mid side. So at the end of the day, Vitality do secure a tower kill for the one kill that they gave up on Shook. And Unicorns can't get much else out of it. But you can see, unlike the last game where we had Fiora and Poppy, and it was Steve that got almost uncontrollable on Fiora when it came to the 1v1, uh, Vizier Chachi is comfortable in a situation now. He has the Iceborne Gauntlet, has the Sunfire Cape, had them for a while, and he's able to just sit in this lane and clear because Kabushad while yes, he is, well, was having a decent experience advantage, you know, a bit of a farm advantage, it's kind of run out for Cabo. He's 0-3-0, and 0, has two items, which is fine, only level one boots, so he can't afford to be too far up the lane, otherwise he pretty much just dies. And Cabo's just not in a situation where he can control the side lane. He lost the Baron buff in the last fight. It, had, it would have expired by now as well, but it's not a good situation to be in for Vitality. Yeah, I mean, looking at it too, Cabo has been a player that Vitality have been able to rely upon in all of their games extensively. This has got to be, if not his worst score so far, one of. Take a look at it though. The Unicorn leading the gold game at about 5,000 or 4,000 as it is. 28 minutes into the game and Vitality have just not been able to find an opening in any fight. This 4-1 is not working as well for them as they'd like. Yes, they've knocked a couple towers down. If they can buy some more time, Chachi's got no teleport. 
but they can't take on Unicorns face to face. And it kind of exposes uh, the problem that Vitality are having. Yesterday, they oh, Fox is coming. A oh, big package, and Shook just gonna not big waste any time. Burn Flash. Fox does get hooked, but Hillisang is there to unbreakable defend him. This really exposes one of the weaknesses Vitality have had right now is that yesterday they won lane one game and just kind of had it work for them. This time, they pretty much lost their lanes. I mean, mid lane got very far behind for Fox. Yes, uh, Nuke Duck hasn't died, but Fox has picked up kills elsewhere. Same with AD carry rollers. Yannan has just not been on form. Kawashad has not been on form. Nuke Duck's trying to push down, but he's doing this very slowly because there are members of UOL that are trying to group around him, and he has to be careful. He keeps waiting in that push. It's just never going to work because they keep blue trinketing him. It has definitely been a rougher game for Vitality. And it is it, it started out really, really well with the fast reverse push with the Jinx being able to take out towers quickly with the secures of the dragons, but there's no way they could definitely they could do the same thing to Unicorns as they were able to do against Element, because this is just a totally different team. They're tied in the standings. Remember, the winner of this has sole control of third place. And that's definitely not without coincidence for both of these teams. They have showed extraordinary control of the map. But right now, Unicorns is just better. Yeah, right. In this game, they uh, definitely are. I mean, we've got Baron coming up in two minutes for these teams. UOL, nine kills to zero. Vitality, very rare you ever see them kill us. Like, this is not something that you would expect to see when you saw these two teams on paper. Bad for me, man. I got Sing on my fantasy. I got Cabo on mine as well. Oh, okay, no, you're, you're completely. Oh, and Nuke Duck might be too. He's gonna be able to flash away though. His Fox takes a lot more damage than he does. Oh, Rocket's coming by. Oh, whoo, whoo, dodge that bullet. <laughs> Fox breathes a sigh of relief. He's like, ah, he didn't it's even okay. stop. I had yeah, Hillis Sang here. Yeah, I had Hillis Sang. Don't worry. <laughs> Nuke Duck's gonna keep on this pushing. They've got a one-three-one going on, but the issue is. They can't individually duel anyone since you unicorns are too quick but at beating them back to the punch. Unicorns are giving them a lot of room here to breathe. Like, Vitality realistically shouldn't have this setup. Vitality are playing this from behind. And they're maintaining uh -oh. a 1-3-1. They've caught Rudy. Rudy is hooked in, but he will tunnel away. And now Hillisang is caught unbreakable. How much is it for real, though? About oh, that much, but he catches him on the backside. Another great hook from Kasing, and his health is so low. The rocket, Yarden, starts to run wild. And now they look towards the bottom side. Meanwhile, still a push going on in the top with Cabo and Chachi duking it out. Cabo's winning this one, though. Uh, he is for now. Problem is, he's got Steelback coming alongside. Vitality is starting to become strong again in this game. For as, as well as the Unicorns were team fighting, they've got a Fiora that wants to scale. They've got a Jinx that wants to scale. And this game is going later for them. So as long as they're making the right map movements, as long as they're in the right place at the right time, taking the right fights, they have enough damage to actually deal with the Unicorns, but it will be tough. The Unicorns still are ahead. Okay. Baron is due up very, very... Oh, it's already Two and a half K gold still, though. It's not as important in 30 minutes as it was yeah. when they had it doubled and it was 15 minutes. But yes, this Baron is such a big objective for these teams. If they can get a cat, Nuke Duck just keeps committing to the wait and wait and wait strategy. Rudy's not even going to see him yet because he's not moving the charm. Does it connect, though? Ah, Nuke Duck. That, I don't think he wanted that chance. Nah, uh, he, wanted, he wanted the Corky, but Fox is just yeah. slippery for him. At that point, Nuke Duck sees four people turn the corner, and he's like, ooh, okay, don't want that. <laughs> Try to avoid a lot of CC. Both these AD carries sitting on QSS. The Steelback's already turned his new Mercurial. Both teams definitely start eyeballing that Baron. The vision on it is Unicorn's book right now, but that could change on a dime. Vitality don't want to give this one up. But if it comes to a 5v5 fight, we've seen so few of those. It's all been on catches and skirmishes mm. this game. Yeah, it has been. Uh, I'm a little surprised just that Kissing hasn't opted for the banner. Only because, I mean, yesterday we saw two ZZ rock portals. And I'm not an advocate that ZZ rock portal is a good item. <laughs> but it serves a purpose. It basically pushes a lane automatically for you. The same thing that a Banner of Command does. And when you're running this kind of composition one, where you want Nuke Duck to go to the solo lane, to push it, and then kind of come across for the team fight, it speeds it up. Right. It just makes everything go that step faster and is more difficult to deal with for the Unicorns. And the Unicorns will start posturing around this Baron. I don't think they'll start it up, but there's only one blue trink. It's immediately going to be popped, and they cleared away, so... 
It's a clo low enough cooldown, but if Vitality doesn't pick any more up, they may be able to pull that trick again with a couple of pink boards. Now Chachi and Tava once again duking it out. Dashes and lunges and hammer shots. Oh my! Into the minions they go. Cabo Cabo shard, wants very low. Though. He does want this kill, but the rest of the unicorns are hot on the trail. At least Rudy is. Chachi is trying to bait him into this fight. Waits for the parry. There's a flash. Um, the buckler! buckler! Oh, he got it! Oh, oh. Chachi! 504, what a poppy. Call him Captain America. And the rocket missile. Throws, throws the buckler, gets the rebound. Captain Europe, I guess. It's uh, not quite. But vitality anyway. That's uh, that's a big blow to them right now. Uh, losing out in that one versus one uh, just kind of is going to have on the back. It was going to be an epic 1v1, though. Mm. See, the Baron's getting started. Pilisang is on zoning duty, but. Might is here. Shook is around the backside. You can see Hillisang is caught up by Nuke Duck. He might be in a bit of trouble as he took over. They bail away from the Baron, and now Nuke Duck comes in a little bit too close for comfort. There's the Summoner Hill to keep him alive, and Chachi is in hot pursuit. Let's see if they can make the play. Combo Shard still got 15 seconds on the line. Chachi going low. Chachi going down. Shook separated from the team, but they answer back with a kill on Singh. Nuke Duck yarding. Oh, oh he's done up. Oh. A winner's fight. We'll finish him off. Nuke Duck's down, and Unicorns of Love have the opening to push the base. Cabo Shard is up, but can he deal with four people? I would say no with this Winter's Bite still available on Braum. Rudy has, is still with the team as well. Shook's recalled. Shook is recalled, so it's a four on two as Cabo Shard is just oh, they're sucking so in to try and do it, but they're still doing enough damage to these towers. Shook's trying to deter him. Cabo, Hillisang nearly goes down. They are playing with fire here, and it is so low, but they've caught Cabo. They got the knockup. Rudy pushed him back, but he's still alive. Fox, there's the cleanse, looking for Shook, backs away. What a close Ooh. call, and they don't secure the Nexus Tower. Oh, it was just enough with Kasing coming up. A great hold by Cabochard and Shook, just to hold in front. Teleport coming in from Cabochard. Oh, Rudy the gets guard. the juke! He's not far. Oh, he's down well, it's another juke. All right. That was Hide a flash. Hide time, Cabochard. How yeah, good he is. finds Fox, who's going to have to run away. The old out. Rudy. Fox has got to go. He's no mana. Oh, the rocket. Oh. Fox on the run. Slippery Earth Rider Corky, but Cabo is not giving Kimmy's up. here. He's got the winner's bite, but can he still do the outplay? And in comes Chachi. Oh, popping Illy down, but they managed to secure him. Gets the knockup. Kasing's coming around the side, calling his proc, and Cabo is pulled to safety. Holy crap. Ooh, wow, that sequence, top lane. Fox got out from all of it. Man, that's uh, the great escape there. Rudy's caught. Yeah, Kasing, though, is taking the most of the damage, and he's getting hammered down, but he stays alive. Throws the lantern. They turn it on to Rudy, and they back away once again. So many close calls this game in and around that Baron pit. And now the side waves are the point of contention. Downed inhibitor in the top side. It looks like Vitality looked to patch up some holes there as they send Cabo down to the bottom side to deal with that wave. Oh man, Vitality just holding on by their fingertips. Man, this has been a, a very back and forth game for what started was a really slow game. 17 minutes, we only had two kills. We're now up to 16 kills. It's a in high last 20 minutes. game, Press. Well, This Baron, <laughs> hey, in terms of excitement, my heart is a pounding as Unicorns look to secure this Baron buff, Nox shook against oh, the wall, there's gone. the rocket! They managed to turn off kill. Fox, two kills on it, and Shook turns into the pit! Yeah. Steel oh. away! Steelback and Hilly are way too low, but the calling comes out as Steelback picks up that one and knocks down Shook again. A double kill for the Lucian. So three members of Vitality sitting on the Baron buff, shut down for Yarden as he's able to secure Chachi, and now they look for Hillisang way too slow around the side. It's only a matter of time. And Vitality come up huge here, but they've got super minions knocking on the front door. Yeah, they actually can't use this Baron buff yet. They have to wait for the timers to come back up. Cabochard did recall and push the minions back out of the base. He's going to collapse onto Hillisang now as well. Hilly's a goner. It's been a wild ride, but Hilly will finally go down. Rom's adventure ends there for the time being. So. Looking across the scoreboard, it is just so damn even. 100 gold separate these two teams at 37 and a half minutes in. What a game. Man, Unicorn started the Baron, and <laughs> again, we see a team get baited into the Baron. At this point, they thought it was safe. They thought everything was good. Nuketuck, however, with the plays, getting in that lands the damage is enough for Kjanan to follow up on him. From there, split focus from the Unicorns. Hellasang was trying to defend against Nuketuck and Shook sneaks himself over the wall. 
for the steal, and, and it's business as usual for Cannon on cleanup duty from here. Yeah, that's what I love about it, Jinx. It doesn't matter how many rockets you miss, when you <laughs> land that one, man, it feels good. Hey, you miss every it. rocket, you don't fire. Hey, look at that Look at that score he's managed to rack himself up. Yeah, he's had a number of deaths. A couple of those were definitely dumb mistakes. 5-3-1 is nothing to sneeze at. Late game, Jinx definitely coming into her own. And you're going to see Steel back, even though he's got the ridiculous cooldown reduction, not be quite as effective, except for clearing those minion waves. <laughs> and you can see Hyanin is uh, being realistic about those mistakes as well. He says, well, I've had to flash out of things quite a few times, so I'm going Distortion. Uh, gonna have that on a lower cooldown, and he's like, no, I don't want that to happen again. Captain oh, Boots yeah. on Kasing as well, so he makes a hook. To follow that up. Captain like Hook. Ah, uh, wow. Sorry. It's been a while since I'll leave. Oh, no, no, I'll give it to you. You get one. I'll get Because last one. week it was me doing those, so. I'll take a look as Vitality holds strong in the middle. They have a wave. Just about even on top looks a bit bigger, so it should start pushing in their favor. The really crucial thing, though, for Unicorns, if they want to start these fights and get back into this, after they wait off the Baron buff, that is, is to get Rudy into a good position to ult to a tunnel and start the flank, because there have definitely been a couple of misfires on that front. Well, Inhib is coming up as well, so Vitality are uh, going to be oh, looking to pick up flanks. Teleport around the backside, it's Chachi. They've already caught Shook, though, and in he goes, charging heroically. Steelback picks up the kill under Shook, and Cabo Shard has absolutely no chance. Shut down, and a Yarnin! Holy oh, kill back. there! Not quite down yet, but very low on the side of Unicorns. They can't keep pushing this one, but they've already got two. Now looking for Kasing. Fox and Rudy should be able to finish him off, and they do. Fox picks up another kill in this game, and Chachi goes all the way deep, but he intercepts a rocket. It's Nuke Duck that gets the kill credit, and all said and done, Three for one. Okay, so they give top inhibitor now. Hyanan has to stay alive. If Hyanan dies, this game is pretty much done with it for in favor of the Unicorns. Unicorns will take both mid and top inhibs or attempt to. It is all on the AD carry now for Vitality. No flash available. If one stray uh, you know, Winter's Bite lands, it could have been curtains for Hyanan, but that is the end of that sequence. They survive with one inhibitor remaining. And talk about the push. We did get to see a banner of command, but it is Hillisang who built it. So, <laughs> Unicorns are going all in on this push strat. They've got two inhibitors, and in a heart-pounding game, we've hit 40 minutes on the clock. Let's see how that all went down with the teleport for Chachi. And this was uh, Cabo being a little bit late to this fight. He appears right in the middle of four members of the Unicorns without Shook to back him up. And Jalen's having a kite back here the entire time this fight. Yeah, it appeared right in the middle of four members, and then he pulled his disappearing act. Unfortunately, Vitality was not what they needed. Kasing followed him down to the grave, and well, you know the rest of it. So Unicorn's right back in this, but the gold stays maddeningly close. It does. So like, uh, considering how this game started, very slow paced. At least it exploded in the past 20 minutes. Yeah. And you can <laughs> see how close it is. Look at that Baron Power Play. It's not the lowest we've had today. Well, the, the, thing, about, the thing about Baron Power Play is the later the game goes, the lower the Baron Power Play is the actual value right. becomes because pretty much most of the game is just in the baron itself the baron gold that you get that was even less yeah exactly it's not quite as less as the one we had earlier today that was 120 oh uh, when you get wiped uh, when you get good. wiped yeah that's uh, not great but when there's not a lot to take there's or or the inability to take which is more relevant in this game like vitality couldn't actually push forward so it means that they didn't actually gain anything too much more so uh UOL in this situation are looking to close in. They've got the two lanes of supers. Vitality can't do too much here. They, they're just for like Oh, Nuke Duck, speaking of picks, they almost got him as they knock up with the Glacial Fissure, but they've got to worry about the supers pouring in the top side, sending Cabo on cleanup duty, but that means they will only have three left to defend with Nuke Duck back in the base. It's so difficult though for Hyanan right now. He's got to chunk through a puppy that has a Thorn Mail, a Sunfire Cape, an Iceborne Gauntlet on the other side. You've got a Randuin. Chachi's winding up. Yeah, Chachi nope. just for zoning. Doesn't need it. They've got the tower. And Shook and Nuke Duck is oh, the one Nuke who's caught in. He's getting chunked down oh so closely. And they didn't quite finish him off. Yarnin manages to take out Chachi. Can they make the oh, hole? The snapped. Rockets! The Jinx is running wild! That's a double kill! And can they pull this defense? Oh, they think they did. 
They just hold on to the base again. The third time in a row, Vitality have been just able to deter the push. And it was all because Unicorn started to stack, stacking against the Jinx, against an Ari. this AoE damage that is just gonna shred through them at this point in the game. Man, it, it is tough for Hyanan to do enough in these fights, but if they stack like that, he suddenly gets so much more value on his auto attacks. So much more, because just with the amount of damage to multiple people, it, 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 he's able to wipe them out. We'll take another look at it again. This and Chachi, they feel like they have nuked us. Unicorns all go in as one. All five people dive onto just the Ari, and from here, Hyanan is getting so much damage off onto Rudy, onto Hillisang. Cabashad in the front as well here to apply extra damage and don't damage the inhibitor. <sighs> wow, this game is really back and forth when it comes to these pushes. You know, in really crazy games, I often make the statement that a big fight ends it. I don't think that's true this time. These have been just so oh, close. It, it will be true. Well, when there's yeah. a big fight, when there's a big fight with it. Someone gets aced, but that just hasn't happened. It, We're 44 minutes into this game. Unicorns are making a beeline rush for mid, though. However, however, this hasn't really been the kind of game that you would expect from two teams tied for third place. It's been a very open, very sloppy game from uh, both sides when it's come to these later team fights, especially Vitality. A little bit surprised by how loose they played this game. Third inhibitor goes down, and they are they are paying for their mistakes with how torn their bases apart. The threat now is who gets to Baron and does it. <laughs> Both teams yeah. still have all five members available. No one should really be rushing it right now because blue trinkets are a thing. They exist. Unicorns aren't available right now. Vitality have one. So teleport available for Vitality as well. So Cabo is going to be the one sitting in the base. But can he deal with three waves of double super minions? I don't know. Uh, he needs a lot on the Fiora, but they've caught Hillisang and they oh, just blow him up. Well, Appropriate nuke duck gets that kill. A, like a 60 minute, a 60 second death timer normally yeah. you'd say is enough to tip this. The problem is three lanes of supers means that Vitality can't actually push off just the support kill. It does give them the ability to control the vision though. They should go Baron right now. There's, uh, there's Dragon going down. I, well, the thing is they have to then clear a pink ward. They have to clear wards behind. They yeah. have blue trinkets. It's not a decision that you can just make very quickly for Vitality here. And a game that started with two dragons in favor of Vitality has tipped to put unicorns on a point where they have three inhibitors already down in favor of the unicorns. They have four dragons already in the bank. Six minutes more on the clock gives unicorns a plethora of options to end this game. Yeah. Definitely trying to stack the odds in their favor just to tip the scales in the game that has been just so balanced. Back and forth, back and forth. Vitality trying to hang on. They've got two inhibitors back up, and they've kept Cabo Shard inside the base and inside the side lanes to clear things up. There's still a couple of wards sitting there, though. It'll be a while before Chachi has the option to try anything sneaky in the teleport department, but four members of Vitality sticking it out close and they are committing to the 4-1 since that's about the only thing they can do with four super minions in the bottom <laughs> side. cabo has got his work cut out for him and Unicorns are starting to slow march up. Oh, Cabo can't really do too much more than he's doing right now. He's like, oh, guys, like, I'm doing it At least he's Fiora. He didn't it's pick like... a tank. It's not a Cabo style champion. That's true. That's very true. He's, he's played nothing but carries this play. And Unicorns are just going to go for this. They say, you know what? Let's try to make the play that ends the game. Mano a mano, but Mano a Baron is not going to happen as they oh, pull they off. Oh, they the TP at least here. They did. Oh, he finished Cabo. it. He completed it. Whoa. Oh, and he instantly bailed out. Ooh. Did not want. Vitality say, not today, but they burn a TP to do it, and Chachi's gonna have his pretty soon. Problem is, somebody has to recall to deal with bottom wave right now. Like, that wave is gonna push in. Once it pushes up, you can look to do exactly the same play. Either Vitality lose their last remaining tower of the game, or somehow they try and stop Unicorns from taking Baron, which it, it's just a situation that is a lose-lose, potentially, unless something catastrophic happens and Vitality can win a team fight without the same kind of way they did last time when Nuke Duck deals a lot of damage and Hyanin just, you know, picks up the pieces. Well, see if he's able to. Unicorns continue to keep the dra Baron Pit, rather, the focus of this game as given the Chachi tower. is waiting. Super Minion is still streaming in. They've got to make a play now. Vitality does, that is. 
Unicorn's just trying to draw them away and oh, buy some this, time. This is so good from the Unicorns. They're like, okay, well, we have to force them to contest this Baron, but they're committing to giving the bottom lane tower, or at least giving extra damage down onto it. They didn't get the tower. A good read from Vitality. Nukta is going to eat most of the culling, has to back himself away. Ooh, Shannon stepped forward. It's a three-man Baron that is being done. Shook is here. He has been spotted. It's the 50-50. If they can catch Shook, they can turn that in this their favor. This could be the biggest steal of the spring split. Oh, he's winding the hammer up. He's going in early, though. It doesn't hit him. And now the fight is on. Shook's, Shook's gone down. No more smite. The Baron still chunking him out, but it's secured by Rudy. And now Vitality. Then they have to get away. The game could end right here, right now. The Unicorns are still battering and bruising, but four members of Vitality are full holding strong. Nuke Duck, Spear rushing away. Super Minions in. Steal back with the shutdown. He goes down Yarden after the fact. But Yarden is going for this. Dodging away. Still minions on the top side, taking out the inhibitors. Oh, we got him. No, he's going to burn the flash, and now he's going down because Singh and Yarnan are all the remains of Rudy's Vitality. Here. Unicorns have got to end this one as it goes. The That's double it. kill. That's the game. 48 and a half. Unicorns of love. That is the game. The Unicorns close this one out and take control of third place. I got goosebumps, man. Whew. How about those unicorns? What a back and forth yeah. game. But they want it. Man, that was uh, a slow game into an explosive slugfest to end that one out. Unicorns tried to just brute force the base four, five times, finally. They realize back away, burn the teleport, and bait in vitality. And the unicorns of love are looking a lot more consistent than they have looked previously. And that's, that is with three different junglers. <laughs> with three different junglers, and that was the biggest problem I think anybody had with the unicorns, and they seem to have fixed it. For now. <laughs> we're, we're, we're getting close to the halfway mark of the split. But for Vitality, that game was just so off the wall. They